Hi, everyone. Thank you for viewing this presentation. Today, I'm here to talk to you about the Meraki dashboard API as it relates to our Python library and open API specifications. Uh, so my name is Shea Chang, and I'm a solutions architect on the Cisco Meraki team, uh, looking after our API and developer ecosystem as part of the product management team. And here at Meraki, we want to make things simple, as you may know. And that applies to our APIs as well. So what you're seeing here on my browser right now, which redirected from meraki.io, is our developer hub. And this is the website where you can find tons of resources on how to use Meraki's API and get started with building your own solutions and cool ways to augment Meraki, uh, whether it's for network programmability, to automate, or to configure and deploy thousands of sites, or for scalable uh, monitoring and management across the board. Uh, there are many resources here at your fingertips. So specifically what I want to show you today is how our dashboard API Python library is built off of our V1 open API specification. And just to take a step, step back, if we look at our dashboard API documentation for version one, what you see here is that with the V1 release um, from August uh, of 2020, the structure has been streamlined uh, on the left-hand side. And instead of having many sections as we did previously with V0, we now have consolidated into 10, uh, as of today, general scopes, which are divided into how dashboard is structured with organizations, networks, and devices, and then seven product-specific scopes today for each of the individual specific products. So to give you an example, for instance, if you wanted to configure group policies, right, in V1, because group policies are uh, assigned to networks and span across multiple products, we find them under networks, we find them under configure since they're part of configuration, and very quickly we see the API endpoints for you to control your group policy configuration. On the other hand, though, is let's say you want to look at how uh, much interference or how congested is your RF spectrum for wireless. We'll find that uh, API uh, feature set under the wireless scope, since it's specific to wireless. And instead of configure, these are monitoring endpoints. And we see that there are quite a few endpoints for you to uh, make API queries and requests if you want to collect information about the signal quality, as well as things like channel utilization. So high level, this is how the dashboard API v1 is structured and gives you a way of hopefully finding the future, uh, whether it's something we have today or something that is new that comes out uh, after this recording and allows you to very quickly get started with being able to make these API calls yourself. Now, how do you make these API calls, right? And what you can see here is that in our documentation, you can actually make the API call specifically right here in the browser by putting in your API key. We have one here already, which is uh, from a sandbox environment. And you can also take a look at the different templates that we have available. So these include things like uh, curl from the command line, or if what you want to do is uh, implement this in source code, we have our Python library templates available um, just by clicking on the Python library template here. So let me talk a little bit more about the Python library specifically, right? Because uh, you can use any programming language. Um, Python is not the only option here. And what we find is that most of our customers uh, who are coming into the Meraki API uh, world are in fact using Python. It's one of the most popular languages. It's also very easy to get started. It's also uh, the one language that Cisco DevNet uh, has, uh, use, is using very heavily across both the training and certification materials. And because of that, we have um, developed a Python library for use with Meraki's dashboard API. And what you can find is that this Python library is available on GitHub and has a lot of features that make it very simple for you to get started and to consume when it comes to dashboard API. Specifically, right, things like logging, right? So this is where if you uh, make an API request against dashboard API, that request is logged. Uh, what inputs were included in the request as well as the output, whether it was successful or if you ran into an error, what sort of error was returned. Uh, so all of that is logged. And what that means for you is it's very um, easy for you to go back in and see if you ran a script, how much of that script completed, 
how much of it failed, and if it did fail in certain places, what were the errors? There are other, other um, convenience mechanisms included here as well, right? So things like automatic retries, especially for rate limit 429 errors, uh, being able to uh, use pagination automatically, right? So this is something that where um, you may have to do this manually by hand if you weren't using the Python library. But if you want to say, get uh, all of the clients or get all of the devices in the network and you have to iterate through multiple pages, well, simply passing in uh, one parameter into the Python library allows you to uh, be able to make that call, uh, function call once. And you'll see that shortly in a live demo. And then finally, uh, from customer's input, uh, we heard that it might be useful, right? That you may want to write up a script in Python, but no, not run it immediately or not uh, make those network changes immediately because you want to wait until a maintenance window later. And we have a simulation mode in here that allows you to preview those calls first before any changes are made and pushed out to your dashboard organization. So let's actually show you how to get started with the Python library. And what I'll do here is I'm gonna go ahead and open up my terminal window, drag it over. And the first thing you wanna do is install it from the Python package index. So you can do that with pip. And you can see that I already have this installed on my end, right? So this is where if you have it installed, you can do a show Meraki. You can see that I have the version 1.1.0 B1 installed. And you can of course pass in the upgrade flag to install the latest version if you want to. So at this point, once I have this Python library installed, what I'll do is um, actually run a script from, brand, uh, from scratch, right? So what we'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and open up my PyCharm IDE editor. and drag that window over as well. So brand new script, just start from scratch here. And the first thing to do here is to import the Meraki library that we just installed. So one simple command, which imports all the functions as well as all of the exceptions that you may need to catch later on. And what uh, we'll see here is if we go ahead and um, take that API key, right? So let's take that API key that we saw earlier from one of the templates. And this is a sandbox key that you can use. So one thing to note is uh, you don't even have to be a Meraki customer to get started with uh, Dashboard or our APIs. You can simply sign up uh, for an account at dashboard.meraki.com, generate an API key, and start using that um, without having to uh, necessarily buy any Meraki hardware or licenses. And similarly, uh, we provide an API key like uh, the one here that you see uh, as a sandbox environment so that you can get started and test uh, Meraki APIs without having to necessarily start um, your own org or account or have any actual live hardware. So in this case, I have my API key. And what I'll do is I'll instantiate um, this API class for dashboard API, right? So this is essentially a client that allows us to connect to dashboard API and make the calls here. And you can see there are many different options um, in the client. So things like whether you want to use a different base URL to take maybe advantage of a mega proxy or to pass in a certificate or to change your options around logging uh, or the simulation mode that I mentioned earlier. So these are all options that are available to you if you want to adjust and tweak these settings. Okay. And then once I have this uh, dashboard client instantiated, the next thing I can do is to um, make calls to the API. So let's say I want to get a list of orgs, right? So let's get uh, the list of orgs. You can see very quickly here, using the IDE, I'm able to, um, with a combination of tab keys and others, very quickly find the different functions and endpoints that I need. And furthermore, if you have a function, right, that requests um, or requires some parameters to be specified as inputs, if you hover over uh, the function name, you would see that as well as a link that takes you to the documentation on the left-hand side of my browser. So uh, very simple ways to, um, or quick ways to help you as you code together uh, your scripts. 
Right, so let me just make this bigger and also this can be um, focused on. So let's go ahead and run this uh, code so far. Right, and what you see here uh, are some of the logs that are available. Um, in fact, we should have at this point a log file. Uh, I think that will get refreshed in a little bit. And these are simple um, output commands of that log as well. So if I take a look at the list of the orgs, we see in fact that we have a bunch of orgs that are returned, uh, including one that is the DevNet sandbox, right? So the DevNet sandbox has an org ID of 549236. I'll save this at the top. And then the next thing I can do is get my list of networks. So I would need to pass in, as you can see, the organization ID, right? So here, what I'll do is I'll put in the org ID, which is the 549236 that we just got from the first output. And as an example of pagination, right? What you see here is the endpoint to get the networks of an org uh, uses a per page parameter. So this per page parameter says, tell me how many uh, results you want per page. By default, it's a thousand. Uh, but we can have as little as three uh, if you want to do that. I'm not really sure why, uh, but actually we will do that for the purpose of a demo, right? So I'll pass in per page equals to three. And what you can see from making this call once is that we should now have some networks that are returned. And there are a total of three networks in that array, right? So for instance, the first network that's returned is one called always on. It's a combined network with appliance switch and wireless. And uh, I want to show you the per page parameter here because what this allows you to do with the Python library is to very quickly specify things uh, like the total pages parameter, right? So this is a convenience mechanism again. It's not part of dashboard API, it's something we added. It can take advantage of um, the library and be able to do things very quickly without having to code some of this up yourself. So by passing a parameter like two, for total pages, what you'll now see is that we should have, if I spell networks correctly, we should have a total of six networks, right? Because that's two pages of three. And similarly, if I want to get all of the pages, I can pass in negative one or the string all. And what you'll see is that now we need to make a few requests to get all of the inputs. And we have a total of 10 networks in the org. So very quickly, uh, this is an example of just running the Python library and getting started with Meraki from the API perspective. I did want to mention how the Python library is in fact generated, right? Um, because what you can see here is that uh, the Python library is inclusive, meaning it includes all of the features, uh, all the endpoints that are available publicly in the dashboard API. But how do we create it, right? And what we did here is we actually included a generator library. So if you did want to generate this yourself, uh, you can certainly do that, right? Um, the code here, there's some description in terms of how to run it. And what we're doing here is we're getting, um, or we are making the Python library and we're creating it from the open API specification. And the open API specification is actually the source of truth for a lot of the tools that you see, whether it's the Python library here or the uh, documentation that we were looking at earlier, as well as things like our Postman collection. All these tools, um, are released and generated from the open API specification. And we actually have a link here on GitHub. So you can see that uh, this is what the open API specification looks like formatted um, with uh, a browser extension to make it more readable. And it, it again is a source of truth. So this is uh, effectively one single JSON file that includes all of the details about every single Meraki dashboard API endpoint, right? The path, its method, its uh, input parameters, how to um, uh, enumerate different types of inputs, and also sample responses, right? And it's very useful. So you may not be using uh, the open API spec here yourself for any uh, tooling purposes, but the tools like the Python library that many customers are using are in fact generated from the open API spec. Uh, so definitely take a look at uh, the generator if you're interested more in how you can uh, potentially use the open API spec as a raw input into some of the tools that you may want to create yourself.
One final example I want to point out, right, in terms of how the open API spec is very useful in what we've done with Dashboard API v1 is this concept of configuration backups. So configuration backups are, are something that many Meraki customers have asked about for a, a long time. And we have this um, automation scripts repository on github.com slash Meraki, where the backup uh, solution here is open source and allows you to simply run uh, the Python script using the Python library to backup configurations from your dashboard org. And how this was uh, created was also based on not just the open API spec, but also with our V1, uh, you know, um, synergies and, and uh, enhancements, right? So what I mean by that is uh, we take a look at all the different types of uh, dashboard uh, features for different uh, things like appliances, networks, and um, wireless and, and switch. And what we've done with V1 is make it so structured in a way that the path and the endpoint operation name, so you'll notice that some of these endpoints or all these endpoints have an operation name, it's based on how the path and how the endpoint works, right? So what I mean by that is if it's a wireless uh, feature, right, um, it would uh, have, you know, something like wireless in its name. And it might, this might sound really mundane, but this wasn't the case necessarily for V0. So in V1, we've definitely streamlined how not just the endpoints are collected, but how they are displayed and documented and how the open API works under the hood so that we're able to take advantage of um, these things with higher level tools and uh, things like the open source repositories that are made available. Just to give you an example of how um, you can take advantage of the open source uh, demo here, um, one thing I want you to point out is we have a live demo that you can experience yourself, right? So this is the Meraki API demo platform. And what you do is, uh, as shown here, just you need to sign for a WebEx Teams account. Anybody can do so for free and talk with this bot address and just ask for an API demo, okay? So what you'll see is something like my WebEx Teams window here on the right. And you can just go ahead and start a demo. You can put in your customer's uh, name or your event name if you're doing this for um, the customer. And again, anybody can run this within a few minutes. And what you'll see is that we now have a new room that's created where you can actually either connect to your existing dashboard org. So if you are a Meraki customer with an existing deployment, you can connect to your own data uh, by putting in your API key. But if you don't want to do that, or because you are not yet a customer, you can create a new demo org, right? And this is where uh, very quickly, right? Um, I can have the option here to say, create two sites, as well as to not only, you know, set up those networks in a brand new org, um, create uh, some virtual devices as well, right? So this is where we'll add some um, of these virtual devices. They won't come online, of, of course, they're not real, but what we'll do is we'll, um, you know, add a Meraki security appliance, switch, access point, and camera, so full stack to uh, the two networks here. And once uh, these networks are created, just to show you what that looks like, we'll be able to interact with the demo and run some of the API features uh, that under the hood take advantage of both the Python library and the open API spec um, just by clicking on some buttons, right? So here you can see that we now have one network in Shanghai, there's actually the Meraki Shanghai office, and then there's also a second network in Sydney coming online. And if I refresh, right, you'll see that there's two networks. And this is all happening under the uh, under the hood with dashboard API calls, of course. So once you get to this main menu, right, this is where you can really quickly, just by clicking on some of these buttons, be able to do things like setting up new configuration with uh, new networks or webhook alerts, being able to monitor how many devices are up down, being able to, for instance, uh, do things like take snapshots of cameras. And if you don't have cameras that are online, right, in, in this case, uh, I have virtual devices, what we'll do is we'll be able to pull um, data and cameras or other uh, sources of uh, information from the demo orgs that you uh, see we have available as well. So just a quick way to experience some of this live. Um, I highly encourage uh, anybody who's watching this to try it out using the Meraki API demo platform. It's a very simple way to get started with Meraki. And with that, I just want to say thank you so much for viewing and uh, have a great day.